everyone, welcome to a new video, welcome to my channel. My name is Micah and today we are going to be having a closer look at the new Catrice Demi Matte Lipsticks. Now I don't believe these lipsticks are entirely new because Catrice did a line before called the Ultimate Matte which came in round packaging and now it's more like square. And the reason why I think it's not like entirely different is because there are two shades in both of the lines that are a red. This is from the original line. This is Rouge La La. But guess what they're doing in the new line? Another red that is called Rouge La La. So I also wanted to sort of put the old against the new and see how similar these are actually. Um, just to make sure that, you know, is this really new or is it just the same lipstick but a different packaging. There do seem to be different shades in this new line than there were in the other line though. So what I have for you today is 10, all 10 of the Dabby Matte lipsticks. I will be swatching them for you on my arm as well as on my lips. So here we go. Before we get to the actual lip and uh, uh, arm swatches of the 10 shades, I just quickly wanted to swatch out the two lipsticks I have um, that I think are similar. I have two more shades in the Ultimate Matte line, but those are not part of the new lineup. At least the names are different. So let me start by swatching the old Rouge La La. And this is one of my favorite reds. This has a really, really nice texture, really creamy, nice opacity, stays put all day. This is one of my favorite reds at the drugstore. And then this is what the new Rouge La La looks like. And I think it looks stunning. So I'm not sure if you can see that because my camera sometimes has a bit of a difficulty picking up reds, but it has a really interesting shade bullet. That tip on the uh, bullet, it makes it super easy to apply it. And this has like a velvety texture in the lipstick, like the Lisa Eldridge ones. But of course, Catrice is a lot more affordable than the Lisa Eldridge ones. So if I put this next to it, ooh, they seem to have a slightly different texture. Um, the new Demi Matte definitely seems to have a little bit more shine. Um, the shades are identical, I'd say. I, I'd say this is definitely more matte than this is. Now, I did already try three of these from the line for a review on my blog, and these have a very thin texture, these Demi Mattes, and then they sort of dry down onto your lips which is why they stay put and they do look really nicely. But because of that thin texture, I feel you do need to layer it, whereas this has a lot more opacity in one swipe. Yeah, if I look at it closely, it has a little bit more of a sheen to it, which of course is very trending right now to have a bit of something and not have it be too flat. So I'm glad I have the old one because it's definitely different. Uh, let's just get to swatching all 10 of these new lipsticks and put them on my lips. So I'm not actually going to go through these lipsticks in the order in which they are lined in the lineup. So there's 0, 10 to 100. I'm actually going to start with 100 and then sort of go back to the front again because 90 and 100 are lighter than 60, 70 and 80. So I want to end with the darkest one just to make sure there is no staining that interferes with showing off these lipstick shades. So I'm going to start off by swatching the lightest one first. This is number 100. And that's what that looks like. And this shade is called Nude Crush Every Day. And this is one that I've already tried. Uh, and this is a very nice sort of like nude pink shade. Really, really pretty. So there we have shade number one. This is 100 Nude Crush Every Day. I feel this is a little bit too light on me, a little too nude. I like my nudes to have a little bit more color than this, but it is still very pretty. But this is the kind of shade that I think will look really nicely layered in the center of the lid, uh, lid? No, in the center of the lip for a nice ombre effect. That's how I would personally be using this. But if you're looking for a very pale pinky nude, then this can be a really nice one for you. And then the second lightest shade is a shade 090. And this is a shade that I also already own together with 100. And those pair really nicely together. This is called Forbidden Mauve. So that is Forbidden Mauve. As you can see, they are pretty close. This is like a, 
I would have expected this to have perhaps a bit more purple, but it definitely is more of like a pinky mauve. So that is Forbidden Mauve on my lips. This is definitely more up my street than Nude Crush Every Day. This has a lot more color to it, and I just think it's a lot more flattering, especially because I'm wearing such a basic look today, because I knew I was going to be filming this video. I didn't want to go too overboard and crazy on the color. So this works a little bit better if you're still wearing a very neutral lip. Um, it can pair well with a neutral eye as well. So that is Forbidden Mauve. And now we're starting at the start of the line. So I first have 010 Warm Sandstone for you. And I think this is the kind of shade that appeals to a lot of people because it seems to be like a, like a peachy brownie nude, which I think is flattering on a lot of people. I don't find it very flattering on me usually, um, but that is, uh, what's this called again? It's Warm Sandstone. This is 010, which is the first shade in the line. So that is what Warm Sandstone looks like on me, and I think it works. It's just, you know, this is not my favorite. I think it just kind of drains me a little bit. It's a bit too warm, and cooler tones just look a little bit more flattering on me. But I think on most people, this is the kind of shade that will appeal to a lot of people with like more olive and warm undertones. I think this will look stunning on you. Then we have a slightly lighter peach, which is probably going to look even worse on me. This is definitely a peachy nude. This is called Most Flattering Petal Pink. Well, in the tube, it doesn't look very pink. It definitely looks more peachy. So let's swatch it. Oh yeah, this has like a, a little bit more of a white base to it. So. It definitely has a little bit of pink. It's more like a, it's almost like a pinky coral almost. Very interesting shade. Let's see what this looks like on. As I had feared, this uh, most flattering petal pink is a little bit too light for me. It doesn't really have enough coverage. You can't really see it from a distance in a camera, but close up, I can see my natural lip color shining through this. Now do bear in mind, I have incredibly pigmented lips. So with shades like this, I find them very hard to pull off because it doesn't have that opacity. Funnily enough though, 100 did have opaque coverage on me. This doesn't, it definitely has, like it's just a little bit patchy and this is just not really my kind of shade. I think with the right look, I can probably pull it off. Like if I go for something a little bit differently in my face makeup, not such a warm toned eye. I think it can work, but these kind of shades I find very difficult to wear. And then we're moving on to 030, and this is Café Mademoiselle. So instead of Mademoiselle, they turned it into like matte. And this is another like brownie nude. It's like, like a milky, brownie shade, so I swatched it for you right there. That's the shade right there. I think this can look very flattering. This actually reminds me a bit of Max Twig, but in like a more matte formula because Twig is a satin. So if you're looking for something like that, then this may be nice. So this is 030 Coffee Mademoiselle, and as you can tell, this is super flattering on me. Twig is also one of my favorite MAC shades. It also reminds me of a more opaque version of Speak Up by from the Catrice Power Plumping Gel Lipsticks, which I've been loving. You see me wear that in almost every single video. This is one of those shades that will pair with almost anything for me. So it's like brownish, pinky, nude sort of shades. They just work really well on me. So I really, really dig this, uh, this shade. I think it looks very flattering. There are a lot of nudes in this line. I think this is another one. This is Exotic Nude, and this is 040. Oh, and this is, it looks very similar in the tube to Café Mademoiselle. So definitely have to put this on my lips. It seems to have a bit more red to it though. So we're definitely getting into more like reds and berries territory right now. So I've swatched it for you right there. As you can tell, yes, it definitely has that red undertone. This is, this really reminds me of Stay Curious by MAC, which is from their, um, that Powder Kids lipstick line that they did. I really like that shade too. These like 
reddish sort of nudes work really well too. It's more like a brick nude. Now that screams fall to me. This is an absolutely stunning lipstick for the fall time. It's like a more muted ver version of Max Chili. That's how I would describe this. This is absolutely stunning. And now we get to the fun, bright matte reds, which is of course my favorite category because I love a good red. This is 050 and this is called Boss Up and it's a very vibrant or orange toned red. I already bought this straight away when these were launched together with the two nudes I already showed you. It's a really, really punchy, bright red lipstick. So far, these have all felt super comfortable on my lips. Um, and I know from wearing this out and about that it does stay put because it has a bit of that drought, dry down, but not in like a li liquid lipstick, uncomfortable kind of way. It's definitely the kind of dry down that just helps the lipstick to stay put and adhere to the lips that it won't go anywhere rather than, you know, a very uncomfortable, like, sucks all the life out of your lips kind of feel. That's not this. This still feels very comfortable and you can still sort of move your lips together as you're wearing these lipsticks. That would be Boss Up. Isn't that pretty? I love these kind of shades on myself in the spring summertime. Um, this is definitely one that if I were to wear a neutral look right now, then I would pair it with this. Is it the most flattering on me? I'm definitely a little bit fair and it definitely packs a bit too much of a punch in some cases, but I don't really care about that. I love shades like this, so that's boss up. And then we get Rouge La La, which is 060 in this line. In the old line, this was 030. And this is just your classic red, and I know this will look good on me. Um, these kind of reds, boom, color. Love it. Ooh, next to that, the Boss Up looks very orange. Do you see that? Like, it even has a hint of pink. Very interesting shade. I, I really like that. I love a good bright. For a matte red, this glides on so easily. And look at that shade. Isn't this gorgeous? I love these kind of shades on myself. It's definitely a really classic blue-toned red. These retail for four, like three ninety-nine each. Like this is really, really good. I would definitely be wearing this a lot. Um, it has nice, comfortable slip to it. It does have a hint of shine. I, I would say that in the nudes, the shine was perhaps a bit stronger. In this, it definitely looks matte, but it doesn't feel matte. So if you're looking for a really good, comfortable matte red lipstick that is affordable at the drugstore, for $3.99, you can get yourself this one. Rouge La La. Then we have 070. This is from Rose With Love. This was a shade that they did in their old Ultimate Matte line as well, which I had and then decluttered because I wasn't wearing this enough because Pinks, like, they have to be just the right color for me, like, to be flattering on me, I find. This shade, I'm not sure, I don't own that other one anymore, so I can't compare the shade. But this seems to be darker than the one that they used to do, so this may be a bit more flattering. It's like a really nice, sort of, like, dusty rose shade. That could be pretty on me. Not entirely sure, but it definitely works pretty well, actually. This could be nice. So that would be from Rose With Love, and yeah, I can see why I decluttered this in the end, because it's a nice dark, dusty rose shade, but with these shades, I always struggle to know what kind of eye look goes with this. Like, it doesn't really go with a whole lot, which is why I end up not wearing it a lot. Um, but yeah, it is flattering. I think with like more of a neutral look, it's not too pink. It has a really nice undertone to it. I do really like this, so uh, I actually now no longer remember why I got rid of the other one. Probably just because I was using the other ones more often and they were a bit more unique, but this is actually really nice. And then last but not least, we have 080, and 080 is called Reckless Love, and this is like a plummy 
berry kind of shade. Let's see what this swatch is like. It's the darkest shade in the line. Oh yeah, this is definitely more of like a plum, more than an actual berry. Like it would have been nice if they could have had like a true berry in here, something like Max Rebel. That would be pretty. That's what this line is missing, I think. I don't know about you, but I think Reckless Love is a really, really stunning shade. Um, it's a really nice, deep, dark fall shade, I think. This is really stunning. It's definitely more purple than most berries would be. I would definitely describe this as like a plum, but it does have a hint of red to it. So it's not too stark or dark. I think that on me with like a more cool toned eye look, this would look stunning. So yeah, Reckless Love is another good one. So there you have it. Those were all 10 of the Catrice Demi Matte lipsticks. I swatched all shades for you and I have to say that apart from that light petal pink shade here, I like every single one of these, you guys. Like these are really nice shades. They look nice. They feel nice. They do smell like a little bit weird, like they don't smell like cupcakes or anything like that. They just have like a lipstick kind of smell, so it smells a bit chemically, I would say. They go on really nicely, they're very comfortable, they have a little bit of dry down to them, so they do stay put and last all day, which with a shade like this, of course, you want to make sure you do. Um, now that these swatches have been on here for quite some time, yeah, you can definitely see that some of that shine is still definitely there, but it definitely looks a lot more matte than when I first swatched it. I definitely think this is a well-worthy replacement of the Ultimate Matte line that Catrice used to do. I do feel that there's a lot of nude going on in this line. Seven of these, I feel, can work as a nude on different complexions. Um, so especially that top row, I think, is very neutral. I definitely would like to see them do more fun shades maybe like a bright pink and like a good berry. That's something that I would definitely like to see in this line. So I definitely hope that they will extend the shade range in the future. Who knows? So these get a two thumbs up for me. So I hope you liked watching this video. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you would like to see more by me. I make quite a lot of content regarding Essence and Catrice products. So if you would like to see more of those, then definitely stay tuned and Without further ado, I hope you have a great day and I see you in my next video. Bye!